You're driving your diesel car exactly the way you think you should. Gentle acceleration, keeping RPMs low, never pushing the engine hard, trying to be kind to it and extend its life. And with every careful, gentle kilometer you drive, you're actually destroying your engine from the inside. I know that sounds backwards. Everything you've learned about taking care of engines says you should drive gently, avoid high RPMs, and never stress the engine. But diesel engines are fundamentally different and what works for petrol engines is killing diesel slowly and expensively. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Your diesel engine is designed to work hard, built to operate under load, and actually needs occasional hard acceleration to stay healthy. When you baby it, you're preventing essential cleaning processes that keep it running properly. The result? Carbon buildup that chokes performance. Clogged DPF systems that cost thousands to replace. Stuck EGR valves fouled injectors, all from driving too gently. Make sure to watch till the end because I'll show you exactly when, where, and how to properly exercise your diesel engine to prevent these expensive problems in the one specific situation where you should absolutely not floor it. Let me start by explaining why gentle driving is so destructive to diesel engines. Diesel engines operate through compression ignition. They compress air to extreme pressures and temperatures then inject fuel that ignites spontaneously. This process is most efficient under moderate to heavy load at sustained RPMs. When you drive gently, keeping RPMs below 2000 and barely touching the throttle, several destructive things happen simultaneously. First, combustion temperatures remain relatively low. Low combustion temperatures mean incomplete fuel burning. Incomplete burning produces soot, carbon deposits, and partially burned hydrocarbons that accumulate throughout your engine. Second, your diesel particulate filter never reaches the temperatures needed for regeneration. The DPF needs sustained exhaust temperatures around 600 degrees Celsius to burn off accumulated soot. Gentle driving rarely produces these temperatures, so soot progressively clogs the filter. Third, your EGR system, which recirculates exhaust gases to reduce emissions, becomes coated with carbon deposits. These deposits eventually block the EGR valve, causing it to stick open or close. Either condition triggers warning lights and can cost $500 to $1,200 to fix. Fourth, carbon builds up on your intake valves and in the combustion chamber itself. This carbon reduces airflow, decreases compression, causes rough running, and eventually requires expensive cleaning or component replacement. The worst part? All of this happens gradually and invisibly. You won't notice the problem developing until one day your car goes into limp mode, warning lights illuminate, and you're facing repair bills that make you question why you bought a diesel. Now here's where it gets counterintuitive. The solution to all these problems is occasionally driving your diesel hard. I'm talking about full throttle acceleration from moderate speeds. Taking your engine to 3,500 or 4,000 RPM under load. Sustained highway driving at steady speeds in the 2,500 to 3,000 RPM range. When you do this, combustion temperatures soar. These high temperatures burn off carbon deposits from valves, pistons, and the combustion chamber. Your DPF reaches regeneration temperatures and burns off accumulated soot. Your EGR system heats up enough to prevent carbon buildup. Your turbocharger spins at proper speeds, keeping its components clean and preventing oil coking. Your fuel injectors operate at their design parameters, maintaining proper spray patterns and preventing deposit formation. This process is sometimes called an Italian tune-up, and it's one of the most important maintenance procedures for diesel engines. Professional mechanics do this to their own diesels regularly because they've seen the inside of engines that were babied versus those that were properly exercised. So when and how should you actually floor your diesel? The ideal situation is during highway driving, you're already at 100 kilometers per hour in sixth gear. Traffic is light, you have clear road ahead, drop down to fourth or fifth gear and accelerate firmly to 120 or 130 kilometers per hour, letting the engine rev to 3,500 or 4,000 RPM. Hold this for 15 to 20 seconds, then ease off and return to cruising speed. The sustained high load in RPM creates the temperatures needed for cleaning and regeneration. Do this once or twice during a longer highway drive, and you've just performed essential maintenance that prevents thousands in future repairs. Another opportunity is when merging onto highways. 
Instead of gently accelerating and struggling to reach highway speed, use this as a chance to exercise your diesel. Accelerate firmly from 60 to 110 kilometers per hour, letting the engine rev freely through the gears. Overtaking slower traffic is another perfect opportunity. Don't timidly accelerate for 30 seconds trying to pass. Drop a gear or two, use full throttle, and complete the overtake quickly and decisively. The key is that you're doing this under load, meaning the engine is actually working hard, not just revving in neutral or while freewheeling downhill. Load is what creates the combustion temperatures needed for cleaning. How often should you do this? At minimum, once per week if you mostly do city driving. Ideally, every few days. If you already do regular highway driving with occasional firm acceleration, you might already be providing enough exercise without realizing it. But here's the critical exception. There's one situation where you should absolutely never floor your diesel, and this mistake causes catastrophic engine damage. Never floor your diesel from a complete stop in a low gear. When you're stopped at a traffic light and you floor the accelerator, you're demanding maximum torque instantly while the turbo is still spooling up and oil pressure is just building. The massive torque spike can shock load the drivetrain, but more importantly, it causes incomplete combustion that produces huge amounts of soot. This kind of aggressive launch creates far more problems than it solves. It generates excessive soot that clogs your DPF rapidly. It causes turbo lag and incomplete combustion. It stresses your transmission and drivetrain unnecessarily. The Italian tune-up is about sustained high-load operation at speed, not aggressive launches from stops. There's a massive difference between flooring it from 80 kilometers per hour in fourth gear and flooring it from zero in first gear. Here's another important point. Modern diesel cars often have multiple driving modes like Eco, Normal, and Sport. When you're doing your Italian tune-up, use Normal or Sport mode. These modes allow the engine to rev more freely and shift at higher RPMs, maximizing the cleaning effect. Eco mode deliberately limits throttle response and keeps RPMs low to maximize fuel economy. It's great for highway cruising, but counterproductive when you're trying to exercise your engine properly. Some diesel owners worry that occasional hard acceleration will damage their engine or drastically increase fuel consumption. Let's address both concerns. Modern diesel engines are incredibly robust. They're designed for commercial use, for towing, for sustained high load operation. A few seconds of full throttle once or twice a week is nothing compared to what these engines are designed to handle. You're not going to hurt it. As for fuel consumption, yes, full throttle uses more fuel in that moment, but the overall impact on your average fuel economy is negligible. A 20 second full throttle pull might use an extra 50 milliliters of fuel. That's less than 50 cents. Compare that to a DPF replacement at $2,000 to $4,000 or carbon cleaning at $500 to $1,000. The fuel you burn during proper engine exercise is the cheapest maintenance you'll ever perform. Here are the warning signs that your diesel needs more exercise. If you're experiencing any of these, start your Italian tune-up routine immediately. Reduced power or hesitation during acceleration. Black smoke from the exhaust under acceleration. Rough idle or engine vibration. Increasing fuel consumption without explanation. More frequent DPF regeneration warnings. EGR or emission system warning lights. These are all symptoms of carbon buildup and incomplete combustion from insufficient engine exercise. Caught early, they can often be resolved simply by changing your driving habits. Left to progress, they require expensive repairs. One final tip. If your diesel has been babied for years and you're just now learning about this, don't immediately start flooring it everywhere. Your engine likely has significant carbon buildup that needs to be removed gradually. Start with moderate acceleration to 3000 RPM and work your way up over several weeks. This allows the carbon to burn off progressively rather than breaking loose in large chunks that could damage your turbo or DPF. If you're already experiencing symptoms of carbon buildup, consider having your car professionally inspected before starting aggressive driving. In severe cases, you might need a forced DPF regeneration or carbon cleaning service before resuming normal exercise. Here's the bottom line. Diesel engines are not delicate flowers that need gentle treatment. They're workhorses designed to operate under load, 
and they actually need occasional hard work to stay healthy. The diesel car owners who understand this get dramatically better reliability and lower maintenance costs. Their engines run cleaner, their DPFs last longer, their EGR systems stay functional, and they avoid the expensive carbon-related failures that plague owners who baby their diesels. Stop being so gentle with your diesel. Give it the exercise it needs. Your engine, your wallet, and your future self will all thank you.